Hello everyone and welcome to IT Pro Guide. We are watching the fourth video in AWS Networking. And in this video, we are going to talk about IP addresses of AWS resources. So the topic we are going to discuss here are the following internal and external IP of AWS resources, how to get a static public IP and a demo on how to configure this with Amazon Web Services Virtual Private Cloud. So some of the topics related to this we already covered in the previous videos, but we will summarize in a way of external and internal IP address. So external and internal IP. Internal IP is a private IP like the same you configure in your network card on Windows or Linux virtual machines. And you know very well that these internal IPs are not accessible from the internet, only from the private network. Similarly, here in Amazon Web Services, the virtual private cloud provided IP address, internal IP address are accessible only from the VPC and not reachable from the internet. And the IP address that you get assigned to your virtual machines or the instance are based upon the CIDR block and the subnet that you have given to it. This is, you know it very well as you show in the previous videos how to uh, assign subnet and how to connect it to VPC. Then external IP address, which is assigned only if enabled. It is a public IP and accessible from internet. So if you have a resources and this resource have a public IP, then it is accessible from the internet. These IP addresses are given from the AWS pool. So don't think that uh, you can get some kind of a fancy numbers. So I told external IP is assigned only if enabled. There is a different case when you launch an instance in a default to VPC. AWS assign it a public IP address by default. When you launch an instance to a custom non-default VPC, no public IP assigned automatically unless you configured it in the VPC. Why I said this? Because when you learn AWS, the first time when you create an instance, a quick, uh, create a quick launch, then you don't need to uh, configure anything like a public IP or anything. You see that everything is working. Next time when you create a VPC, a custom VPC and you connect it and you create a launch instance, then you might think that hey, it worked with the previous uh, step, but when I come to a custom VPC, it didn't work. So this need to be keep in mind. Uh, the external IP is assigned only if it is enabled unless it is a default VPC. There are two public IP addresses or two external IP address options provided by AWS. One is auto assigned public IP and the second one is elastic public IP. The auto assigned public IP that you get when you launch an instance, this keep changing when you stop and start the instance. In some cases, this is acceptable, but there are some cases where you need to fix, uh, uh, but there are some cases where you need to have a fixed public IP. And this can be achieved by Elastic IP. It is another service or resource uh, from AWS. You can buy one Elastic IP and you can assign it to any of the resource. For example, today you assign the IP to one, one web server virtual machine. Next day you want to assign it to a database. It is possible. So it is an IP address like a, a resource that you can connect it to any instance. And it is not chargeable if you assign it to a resources. But if you keep an elastic IP like a reserved for you and not assigned it to any of the resources, then it is going to be chargeable. Log into AWS Management Console. Then you can see there is no instance running at present. Then go to Services and select VPC. The previous demo we had created vpc a custom vpc and we work on the default vpc also so these two vpcs are available here and you can see the cider block that is associated with the vpcs so based upon the cider block you can create subnets and these subnets are the subset of the cider block that given to vpc this subnet decides the ip address of the resources that you're going to connect to this vpc let us go to the EC2 and create an instance and see how the IP address assignments are working. So for that, go to launch instance, then select a Windows free tier. 
for the demonstration purpose that is enough then click next the configuration details default it comes with a default VPC then you can change it to custom VPC from here then when you look at the subnet now the two subnet that associated with custom VPC is listed there then there is auto assign public IP also which is disabled as we go with the custom VPC and there is 251 IP addresses available with the subnet so this you can see from here so that is a good advantage that uh, and up to the network and subnet where the private IP address decide and the auto assign public IP is what decide the public IP of your AWS instance you don't have much control on the auto assign public IP because it pulled from the uh, AWS pool uh, but the subnet and the network decides which IP address is going to be assigned for uh, for your instance so that you can decide what IP address you need based upon that you can select a subnet for the instance and now you can see that when you select a default VPC the auto assign a public IP address enabled but with the custom VPC that is disabled by default but you can enable it based upon your needs so that we can connect to this instance with RDP now let us click on the review and launch button just review the configuration then I have an existing pair already so let's click on the launch instance now you can see the progress of your instance by clicking on view instance I let it initialize once it complete the initialization click on the instance then click to connect then download the remote desktop file then try to connect to this machine let's get the password decrypted I'm not explaining much about this because uh, this is the fourth video and uh, we have done it many times let's click on the RDP and connect it now you can see you are able to connect it to this instance with the public IP and this public IP is not a stable IP once you stop this instance then this public IP release from your instance and that may assign to some other instance so you don't have a static IP in this case as it is an auto assigned public IP so the solution to solve this issue is to get a static IP that is called as elastic IP in NWS. Look at the public IP and private IP that assigned to this instance. You can see the private IP is from the subnet that we had selected. Then the public IP we don't have any control as I said it was pulled from the AWS public IP pool. So let us stop this instance and see the status of public IP. Now the instance has stopped and the IP address at present is 50.17.01.231. Let us see what will happen when you start up this instance next time. Go to the instance and click start now the instance is starting up and initializing now when you refresh the dashboard you can see that the IP address assigned is totally different it is 3.90. something so this is not acceptable always sometimes you may need a static IP for that go to elastic IP you will see it under the network and security then allocate a elastic IP that is the first step to do then click on allocate button then you get an IP address now the next step is to associate this IP address to the instance for that associate elastic IP address and there is two options either to the instance or to the network interface let us choose to the instance because there are some cases where you have multiple interface in an instance and you use one for the public and other one for communicating with your uh, private network so in this case this is a demonstration purpose so I just have one network card only anyway I'm gonna choose for the instance then click to associate 
Now we have associated a public IP to the instance. Let's go back to the instance, then click on the instance. You can see the IP address is the one we as allocated through Elastic IP. And this IP address stay with you even you stop or reboot your instance unlike the auto assigned public IP. And also even if you terminate this instance, the Elastic IP is available as a separate resources. If you want to assign this public IP to some other instance, that is also possible. Thank you for watching this video. And in the coming video, we're going to talk about network access control list. And then following to that, we will talk about security groups also, which are very important. So subscribe my YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.